Hello, this video is one of the modules on offer as part of the Foundation Online Training Course. Our unique course has helped over 10,000 people to study for their Foundation exam. And the course consists of online lessons, videos like this one, quizzes and mock tests. To access our free course and to get the latest version of this video and our collection of videos, go to www.hamtrain.co.uk. Now, on with the module. Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Here's what we'll be looking at in this module. Hello, my name is Pete and I'll be your guide for this module. Propagation, an introduction on how signals are sent around the world, refracted by the ionosphere. In this module, we'll be looking at radio waves, taking a look at the ionosphere, looking at how HF radio signals are sent, and looking at VHF and UHF propagation. Radio waves travel in straight lines. Just like light, radio waves can be reflected or refracted diffracted, i.e. bent. Radio signals get weaker as they get further out from the transmitter. And the distance that radio waves travel can depend on a number of factors, including the type of antenna, the transmitted frequency, the power of the transmission, any obstructions that are in the way, and conditions such as weather. A reminder that as radio frequencies increase, the wavelength decreases. Let's take a look at the ionosphere. This is a layer of conductive gases that are between 70 and 400 kilometres above the Earth. Ionisation of the ionosphere is mainly caused by ultraviolet rays from the Sun. VHF and UHF signals pass through this layer. HF signals are refracted or bent back down to Earth by the ionosphere. Let's look now at the ionosphere and how it affects HF radio propagation. The picture here with a straw in a glass should be a fairly familiar one to you and shows light refraction. The ionosphere refracts HF signals, allowing us to make worldwide contact. The image here shows a transmitter, the signal going into the ionosphere and being refracted back down to the Earth's surface. Now let's take a look at the various HF bands. HF bands are said to be open, in other words they can support skywave propagation, at different times of the day and the year. Pictured here on the right are one of the many checkers that you can find online that shows the conditions for the various different bands – poor, fair, good, etc. Each HF band is affected differently. Solar activity has a big effect on the ionosphere. And to make contacts around the world, you typically use multiple hops, where the signal is sent into the ionosphere, refracted back, back to the ionosphere, back to the surface, back to the ionosphere. Let's look now at VHF and UHF and how that differs from HF propagation. The range of VHF and UHF is less than that of HF typically just beyond line of sight. A handy example here is to think about things like satellites and the International Space Station. They are some considerable distance away, but because there's nothing in the way, such as the curvature of the Earth, you are able to receive radio signals from them and to send signals back. The range of VHF UHF decreases as the radio frequency increases. At VHF and UHF frequencies, radio waves get weaker when penetrating a building. Glass is more transparent to radio waves, hence typically you'll go towards a window to get better signal from your UHF mobile phone. 
Snow, ice and heavy rain can attenuate signals, meaning that the power is reduced, especially at UHF and above. VHF and UHF can be blocked by obstructions. Hence antennas are normally located outdoors at high points. Hills can cause radio shadows. The blue car pictured here is in the shadow of a hill. And outdoor antennas are generally preferable to indoor or loft antennas. The range that you can get from VHF and UHF is dependent on several factors. The antenna height, the antenna gain if using a beam antenna such as a Yagi, having a clear path with no obstructions, and the transmitted power. Again, higher antennas are preferable to higher power as they improve both the transmit and receive performance. The range of VHF and UHF can be extended by some atmospheric conditions. We've mentioned the ionosphere, pictured here. Below that is the troposphere. VHF and UHF signals pass through the ionosphere, but propagation can occur through the troposphere. Two common effects that can help us in amateur radio are called sporadic E and atmospheric ducting, and they're ways that UHF and VHF signals can go further than the line of sight. With sporadic E and atmospheric ducting, it's quite possible to get some significant distance using VHF and also UHF. That's it for this fairly short module on propagation. A quick summary, the ionosphere is a layer of conductive gases between 70 and 400 kilometers above the Earth. Remember those numbers, they frequently come up at foundation exam. HF signals travel around the world, refracted by the ionosphere. VHF and UHF are generally just beyond line of sight, although some atmospheric conditions can extend this. And at VHF UHF, height is more important than transmitted power. And that's it for this short module on propagation. If you're following along with our online course, remember at the end of this module to take the online quiz. Thanks for watching this latest module of our Foundation online course. We hope you found it useful. If you're looking for some more help with your studies, we do recommend the Foundation Study Guide, available from Amazon in Kindle or paperback format. Thanks for watching again and best of luck with your studies. As a reminder, this video is part of the free Foundation online course. If you're studying for Foundation, sign up and get access to all of the course material, including slides, lessons, handouts, videos, quizzes and our mocks. You can sign up at www.hamtrain.co.uk